Yo, I'm Brendan. M1 Finance has what appears to be a compelling offer when it comes to their 5% cash account, but thanks to a subscriber asking me to make this video today, I've dug into the details and found out that it's a lot more complicated than it actually seems. Did you know that there's really two different kinds of like cash savings account products at M1 Finance? And the one that's actually open to use right now isn't even a savings account. It's actually an investment product. And did you know that the interest rate isn't actually 5%? It's less than that. Also, this program is tricky because they use some terms like cash suite program, but this is a very different thing than some other brokerages offer like Robinhood because you can't have your uninvested cash automatically get you a high interest rate. They don't give you that option at M1 Finance. Your uninvested cash here gets you nothing no interest whatsoever, at least for right now. So this is confusing, right? I thought it was a really straightforward product. It's not that straightforward. So let's break down everything I found today and see if this is still a service worth using or not so much. All right, let's start with the positives because that's a good place to start. Why is this an attractive thing in general? Why is our attention drawn to it? Well, you earn 5% on your cash. If you have any substantial amount of cash whatsoever and you're not earning at least 4% on it right now, you're totally missing out. And overall, this might not seem like a very big deal, but it actually is because according to this Wall Street Journal article, Americans missed out on on $603 billion of basically free money by keeping their cash in accounts that earn tiny amounts of interest. Typically, this happens because we keep our uninvested cash sitting there dormant at a big brick and mortar bank, the Chase's, the Wells Fargo of the world, that kind of thing. And they only give us like 0.01 or 0.1% interest, which is basically nothing. And this is terrible. Hence the $603 billion of money that we all missed out on. So it's nice that M1 Finance gives us some kind of option, albeit it's different than what I thought it was, to earn some interest on our cash because it's a vital part of us having a healthy financial life, if you ask me. The cash needs to be working for us just like our invested money needs to be working for us. And this is actually part of my like framework of what a good investing service should have. One wing off the side of the investing service itself is a high yield savings, a high yield cash management sort of structure there. And so in a way they're checking that box. But now let's get into part two, which is if it's not a savings account, what the heck is it? What, what's happening here? Well, little did I know, there's actually two different kind of cash products here that M1 is sort of offering. Right now, the version of this that they are actually letting you touch is their cash management account. And this is the tricky thing. It's not a savings account. It's not a checking account. It's actually an investment vehicle. To open one, you have to have an investment account open with them because it's part of that system. For the regular person out on the street, for us like day to day, it kind of feels the same because you have cash sitting there. It's FDIC insured. It's not actually invested in something that we've chosen, like in a portfolio. I haven't picked an ETF to put it in. I haven't gone and selected a stock. So it is cash sitting there earning an APY. It's not a savings account. Weird. And even on their website here, they don't make it super clear right off the bat what it is. It says, what is an M1 high yield cash account? Well, it, they say it's a place for a dedicated cash reserve powered by your brokerage account. And then whenever you want your money out of it or whenever you want to invest with it, you just send it over. Never worry about hidden fees. Okay, you still haven't told us what it is. To figure out what it is, I had to then learn that they have a high yield savings account too. This is another wing of their website here. And it looks very similar to that last one. Here's the high yield cash account website, idle cash, 5% percent, yada, yada, yada. And this is the high yield savings account website, 5% on your savings, yada, yada, yada. Like what, what's happening here, guys? And the weird thing is you can't even open a high yield savings account. It's still there on their website if you dig around and you find it. But they say right here, while they're excited about the growth of their savings account, we've decided to pause new account openings for the moment. So strange. So I think it's fair to say that we're pretty familiar with what a savings account is and how it's held at a bank, but let's dive in and see what the difference is between a savings account and whatever this high yield cash account actually is. So they say right here, a savings account is defined as a potential interest bearing deposit account held at a bank or credit union. How this works at M1 is they have their savings account furnished by B2 Bank, which is pretty normal. Like a, a brokerage in and of itself is very rarely ever also a bank. It's not that weird for them to kind of farm this out and send your money out to a bank or a series of banks. And so that appears to be what they're actually doing here. But how is that different from whatever this cash account is? So in general terms, they define it first and they say a cash account in theory for the world is a cash management account that can combine services like checking, saving or other investment options under one product. Okay. So what is it at M1? It's still an interest bearing account, but this time, instead of it being farmed out to some third party bank like B2 or whoever, instead it's offered by M1 finance themselves. So the actual cash account itself is not a checking account. It's not a bank product. It's just another kind of brokerage account. And so here's where it gets even weirder. It says the account provides customers SIPC insurance protection and additional FDIC insurance to the cash balance of the account that's swept to the M1 finance 
its insured deposit network. I fully don't even follow that. But what I'm getting from this is that they have a, a list of participating banks that your money gets swept over to. But the big takeaway for me is that this isn't as simple as we thought it was. This is some kind of Frankenstein brokerage account that in some way gets us interest. So they give us a little bit more information with this chart, but even this doesn't help us that much because what I really want to know is how exactly are they using this money to earn cash to give us a 5% return or something kind of close to 5% with this cash account. It says the objective of this thing is to earn interest on short-term savings while potentially investing the money in the account. So if I had to guess, because I don't have all the information here in front of me, I think that they're able to distribute our cash out to this series of partner deposit banks. Then my guess is that by loaning out that cash, they'll be able to cover certain transactions. Maybe there's people trading options. Maybe they've got some, some call options they have to have some liquidity for to be able to process other people's trades. Well, if M1 Finance can be the source of that liquidity for them, then they can stay within the, the regulations they have to stay within to operate as a business, to operate as a, an investment brokerage. There's also a chance that if they're loaning it to a bank for a little while, that they're getting paid interest on that because then the bank does what banks do. They loan that up to somebody else. They sell somebody a mortgage or a car loan or a personal loan for whatever reason and there's a spread there in terms of the profit that they can make. We get one more hint down here a little bit further down below where it says that the M1 high yield cash account has a purpose that is to invest in securities. And then I just saw something really, really tricky that I'm going to share with you in about 30 seconds when we get to the next section of the video, which is the problems with this kind of account, the issues that I have with it and the reasons why I don't think it's as good as I thought it was. Before we move on to that, let's talk about this savings account. Why do they somehow have this product in terms of a normal savings account that we could all be accessing like you would at Ally Bank or some other place that offers a high yield savings account, but they're not letting anyone open a new account. This is so strange. Well, they give us a little hint right here because they say what features will the M1 Finance high yield savings account have? We'll be sharing more about this new account soon. And if you want to know more, you can sign up for updates. Interesting. And I see here in the M1 Finance Help Center, this is the high yield savings account. The last thing that was updated on this FAQ page was only two weeks ago. So my guess is that they're preparing to roll out some kind of new feature here that is going to rely on that savings account. Maybe they're going to add some kind of bucket feature or bring back a debit card or something like that, because right now they only have this credit card. And so if I had to guess, I would say that they're positioning themselves to bring out a new product fairly soon somewhere in the next, you know, three to six months. If I was them, I would want to come out with a rewards debit card. Give me 2% back on debit purchases. Somehow have that be tied into the investment rewards. If you wanted to have your, like your cash back get invested right away, you could do that. But now I'm just speculating. So let's move on to the third part of the video, which is what are the problems with this whole setup? What are the issues with this structure and what kind of things are unsavory about it that might turn us off? Well, thing number one is just the fact that this is not very clear. I wish that they were more transparent about this and more kind of obvious in terms of the difference between a savings account and whatever this cash account is. The fact that they're calling it a cash account is a little bit deceptive to me because I would think that means it's cash. It's really not cash at all. It is invested funds. It's securities. It's a little bit like Tesla saying they have full self-driving when the car isn't full self-driving. It's advanced camera-assisted cruise control, but it is not full self-driving. Full means 100%, and it's not that. Besides that, I have three other problems, at least, that I don't really love about this. The first thing is, that your cash account, just because you have one set up and you have some cash in there and it's active, it doesn't give you interest on your uninvested cash. Whenever you have an M1 invest account, let's say you've got $100 in the invest account ready to be invested, but it's still there in cash. It's not put into any stocks and stuff yet. You get 0% interest on that nothing. To me, this is totally ridiculous because Robinhood and a bunch of other people give you interest on your uninvested cash automatically. I'm not the world's foremost expert on this by any means, but frankly, as long as it's some kind of banking product that's FDIC insured, I don't care how they do this. Figure it out. They need to make this happen. They've really gone a different route here, and I don't know why besides the fact that they're probably making more money doing it this way than if they did use some kind of savings account, like a proper savings account. In the last section of the video here in about three minutes, we're going to see if we can manually set up a system to perform a cash sweep for us because in some of these terms and conditions even they mention cash sweep right here this is called the cash account sweep program disclosure right there cash sweep program and they explain right here when you participate in this you have two brokerage accounts with m1 finance it's not labeled as such but that's what it is so you have your primary one that you actually invest with then you have your secondary one that's actually the cash account and despite the name of this whole faq section it doesn't sweep any cash held in your primary invest account will remain 
as free credit balances at M1 and will not be swept to participating banks. Why not? You guys got a thing against sweeping? You hate brooms? You broom haters? And then it says right here, in very obvious and frustrating terms, the only way for you to access a cash sweep program is for you to do the work. You need to transfer such cash from your primary invest account to your cash account. Why? Guys, this is not hard. Program this in the app. This is so silly to me. Let it be a toggle switch. Do you want your uninvested cash to be earning you 5% interest? Yes or no? Yes. Boom. Done. Do it for me. The other thing that I don't love about this is the little bit deceptive nature of claiming that it's 5% APY. 5% APY this. 5% APY that. And yet when I look back at my account balance, I was like, this isn't exactly 5%. It's a little bit shy of 5% because I had like a really nice round number in there at one point. It was like exactly 20,000 or 25,000 or something in cash that I had in the M1 Finance cash account. And so I thought, okay, well, I can do that math. That amount times 0.05 divided by 12, I need to be getting this exact amount every month, right? It's obvious. It wasn't that amount. And it says right here that your stated APY will include administrative and account fees that may reduce earnings. So it's really not a 5% net in our pocket kind of earning we're getting. We're getting 5% minus some fees. And that's spelled out a little bit more clearly, at least in the high yield savings account disclosures here that say your actual interest rate is 4.89%. Your annual percentage yield is 5%. So we can see a little bit of what that gap might be there. And this was only updated like a month ago. So it's pretty fresh, but this is for the high yield savings account agreement. This is not for the cash account. I couldn't find a chart like this that has specific rate information about the cash account. So I can't really comment on that. And maybe, frankly, it's not something that they can have that much kind of precision over. Maybe they want to have that vagueness built in to say, well, there's going to be some fees. So we'll start at 5% and then whatever the fees end up being, we'll just knock you down from there. Okay, that's kind of sucky. If you say it's 5%, just make it 5%. That's what I wish it was. Another kind of minor qualm I have with it is just the fact that they sort of have a high yield savings account, but it's not really out. We don't know what happened to it. We don't know what the future holds with it. And so it's weird that it's even talked about on their website that we even have access to information about it. Because if it was me, if I don't have that product offered anymore, I would just take it out of the whole equation. I would say, don't talk about this thing because we're not doing it. We don't talk about Bruno, you know, that kind of thing. But that's not my biggest qualm with this whole setup. Yeah, it's annoying. The cash doesn't sweep. The 5% is not that clear. The high yield savings account's kind of ambiguously locked away in a corner with some rats. I get that. I don't necessarily expect every brokerage to have the highest level of integrity and forthcomingness. But this, this part... I don't like. My fourth qualm is the biggest one, and that is the reality that the money in the cash account isn't actually as safe as we think it is. If we remember the structure of this whole thing, the M1 high yield cash account is an investment product. I like investment products. Obviously, if you've watched my videos, you know that. But then they hit us with this little highlighted section at the end of that paragraph that says all investing involves risk including the risk of losing the money you invest. Come on, M1 Finance. In my mind, this is not acceptable because you take something that everyone's going to come at this from an angle of assuming that it's as safe as a deposit at a bank. And by making it into an investment product, by changing the structure of the account, maybe they make a little bit more money. Maybe they somehow ensure that we can have our higher yield. But forcing me to dive through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different tabs of FAQ pages and informational pages to dig up this one line that really reveals the fact that our money isn't safe in this account is not acceptable. They need to come out and just explain this out in the open and say, this is a brokerage account. We're handling it for you on the back end. We're going to create ways for you to get a 5% return, probably a little bit less than 5%. And just so you know, because that money is invested in securities, there's some risk involved. Just say it like it is. All right, enough complaining. I'm done with that. Let's see if we can set up a version of an automatic cash suite program for ourselves and build it into the app using the existing features they already have. Why we're doing this? I don't know. It's very silly. I feel like they should be able to craft their own version of it, but perhaps using their smart transfer tool will allow us to craft our own version of it, set it up the way we want and create a cash suite program that happens while we sleep. Sweep while you sleep. Sounds like an infomercial. Okay, this is awkward. I didn't expect to see this. I thought I was participating in the M1 Finance cash program. What are they calling this thing? High yield cash account. That's what I thought I have. As it turns out, I log in here and I have a high yield savings. I was grandfathered in from before because I must have opened this l long enough ago that they actually offered the product. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can set up these smart transfers even with the old weird closeted high yield savings account and then hopefully it'll work for the cash accounts too. So I'm gonna click into move money and then set up a smart transfer here. So we've got to remember to use our M1 finance language understanding here because whenever they're saying an earn overbalance, I think they're saying an overbalance in this earn account. Like their, their wing of cash management in M1 finance is called earn. So we can have rules set 
set up for an overbalance or an underbalance there, then you can have a crypto version of that. And then now what I'm looking at is a cash invest overbalance. Set a maximum cash balance for your invest account and automatically transfer the excess to another M1 account. I think that's what we wanna do. Let's try it. So this is the account that I wanna set up the smart transfer to come from. Whenever I have an overage in my brokerage account, I want that to go to my earn account. So when the cash balance of my pie is over, pick a dollar amount, I can transfer the excess to earn. I can auto invest it somewhere. I can pay back any principal if I had a margin loan, which I don't, or I could do some kind of schnazzy custom thing. So I'm gonna say, whenever it's over $1, put it in earn. And then within their window of earn, for me right now, all I have is this high yield savings account. It looks like I could open a cash account if I wanted to, or maybe in the future, there'll be multiple different windows of, of opportunities here in the earn section. But for me, I only have this one. So I'm gonna transfer it to that one account. Then I can say, how long do I want this transfer to happen? I mean, for now, I'm okay with it being indefinitely. Otherwise you could set kind of a goal and say, get it up to a transfer limit or until it reaches a cash balance. For me, indefinitely is fine. Then we're just gonna review it again and make sure it's exactly what we think it is, what we want it to be. Create transfer, confirm again. Okay, so the transfer has been created. I had noticed like a couple weeks ago that I did have some cash sitting in there doing nothing. And so I manually just forced it to use that cash to buy some investments with it. Otherwise we could have tested this out right now and seen if the transfer happened and it did its thing like it was supposed to. So by my understanding, that should have fixed this cash sweep problem. It shouldn't have existed in the first place and it's kind of silly. So now that we know all of the facts in front of us as far as what this account actually is, what we're actually probably gonna expect to earn from it, what it's not, which is for anyone who's doing this kind of on the newer side, it's not a savings account. It's actually an investment vehicle. And also knowing that it's not an automatic cash sweep program like Robinhood and others have, factoring all that in, is it worth using? This is a tricky one. This is one of those things where I feel like it'll probably be okay as long as nothing goes wrong. As long as these invested securities don't somehow lose value out of the blue because I don't know what M1 is investing my money in. I don't know what the partner banks are doing with it. If they're doing some oddball risky thing with it and they lose money, then I think M1 Finance can come back to me and go, sorry, bro, we warned you. We told you technically buried in the terms and conditions pages that this is invested money. It's not cash held at a bank. And that means there's risk. That sucks to suck. I think they're protected in that way. Now, if that never happens and I just successfully earn this almost 5% of my money for the rest of all time or until the, the rate changes, then maybe it's fine. Maybe it's a good product. I think my overall takeaway though is it's not nearly as good of a product as it seems on face value. It seems different than what it actually is. And that level of deception knocks it down a notch for me. The fact that you're not getting 5% knocks it down a notch for me. And the fact that we can't be sure of what's happening with our cash really knocks it down a notch because that's the intended purpose of this whole account. Have a secure place to stash your cash. They don't say that in here. They don't say safe, secure, no risk. They don't have any of those words in there. And I think that's very intentional because that wouldn't be true. I just think that for me, whenever I think about M1 finance and a cash management side of things, I don't expect that to be invested money. And so if I'm going to talk about this service or if I'm going to use it myself, I expect that to be a certain thing. And they're leading me to believe it's that certain thing, but that's really not what it is. I think for me personally, the fact that I am accidentally grandfathered into the high yield savings program helps me to sleep a little bit more at night. But knowing what I know now, if you said, Brendan, if they're closing the high yield savings account and all your money is going to get swept into this cash account, whatever this cash management little side brokerage thing is, will you be as happy about that as you were as in a savings account? I would say absolutely not. Would I keep my money in there? Honestly, I would look for another option. Doesn't mean I would for sure move it, but I would want to investigate other high yield savings accounts out there right now and say, is there something else that offers 5% that is what I think it is? That is a banking product that's FDIC insured the way I expect it to be. That's not sort of part FDIC, part SIPC, depending on what's happening with the cash and all that jazz. And the main thing there being it, the thing that I would want to seek out is something that is not a security that's not being invested. Because if I have something that's in my net worth equation, that is money that's invested, I want to be the one who picks where it's invested. I'm not the one picking where the money is invested with this M1 cash account. Some series of bankers across the country are. That doesn't really like rest well with me. Let's just poke around for a minute and see if we can find any other online savings accounts that offer a, a proper 5% interest that is a banking product that isn't your money being turned into securities and then invested by some strangers. I just Googled high yield savings accounts, jumped on NerdWallet. I think all these people are their partners, so they have a financial kind of affiliation with them. We can take that with a grain of salt, but I trust the information at least is accurate. This isn't a total swath of all potential high yield savings accounts, but it's something. So SoFi has 4.6%. Amex Savings is four and a quarter. Barclays is a little bit more. And then whoever Everbank is, I have no idea who that is, 5.15%. If I click into that, it says it is a savings account. 
amount. It says it's insured FDIC for each depositor up to 250 grand. There's no minimum balance required to avoid a monthly maintenance fee. Ooh, and they use the safe word here. Look at that. It's a safe FDIC insured place. They used a word that M1 Finance wouldn't dare to use whenever they're getting your money into some kind of security somewhere with some bank. Interesting. Well, for doing about three minutes of research, I'd be tempted if they were going to take my money out of the high yield savings and put it into their cash account, I'd be tempted to move it to Everbank and or buy CDs with it and or just invest it myself. Screw you guys. I'll invest it somewhere else. I'll transfer it out of here and I'll do my own thing with it. Those would be the potential options I'd consider personally. Oh, and it also looks like Wealthfront has 5% APOI, but I don't know if that's actually a savings product or if it's a similar thing because look, this is a Wealthfront cash account. Now I'm leery of that term. Cash account probably means it's not a savings account because if it was, they would just call it that. Ah ha ha. This looks like it's basically the same thing. They work with partner banks. It's a similar term to M1 Finance, giving you the flexibility and security of FDIC insurance, which also M1 Finance claimed, all delivered through a Wealthfront brokerage account. Bum, bum, bum. So this is basically the same thing. But at least they put this on their front page. You know, you go to Wealthfront, you click on cash. It's right here on the front page, not hidden within a folder or an FAQ page or whatever. At least it's out here in the open. Appreciate that. Even says, not quite a bank. And then their cocky line, quite a bit better. Like, okay, you're telling me it's not a bank. Thank you. Up front, make it obvious. So there's a chance that you've watched this long and you're on the same page as me or you're totally against what I've said. And you've gone, look, it's our job to investigate the kind of things that we're putting our money in. It's our job to read those FAQ pages and those terms and conditions before we click agree. It's our job to know all this stuff. Frankly, I don't think the average person, A, wants to go through all of this work. B, necessarily understands enough about the financial industry to go through all this and then create a deduction about it. I'm not saying I'm some freaking genius because I'm sure you could do the same exact thing if you wanted to devote three and a half, four hours to doing research and then make a video about it. That's what I've done literally all day is read up on this, chew on it, read some more terms and conditions, chew on it. Is it possible for people to do? Yeah, a lot of people could do it. But I think if you're a financial company and you're providing a service like this to people, it's actually your job to be forthcoming about what the hell you're offering. Wealthfront was forthcoming. M1 Finance was not. It looked like M1 Finance actually went through some work to conceal the truth, hide it in legalese and big terms and conditions, and not make it available. Is that sketchy and immoral? No, but it's in a gray zone. It's going in that direction. It's one of those things where if they were proud of themselves and they were confident about the product that they were offering, they would make that a forthcoming thing and call it a feature, like Wealthfront does. Ah, we're better than a bank. You don't need a bank. Use this instead. Well, at least I know. I think whenever we're talking about something that's as important as a financial company, you know, this isn't like a, an Apple Pencil producing company. Maybe you risk $45 buying some off-brand Apple Pencil on Amazon and it doesn't work out. Well, who cares? They claimed it was going to work. It didn't work. Whatever. My bad for trusting these people for buying a very cheap thing. In my opinion, a financial company has a higher level of standard that they need to live up to. We've got $20,000 in cash sitting there. And for most of the time today, I thought it was in this goofy cash program. I'm a little bit relieved that it's in this savings account program, but I had no idea until I did this deep dive that I was going to come up with this conclusion in the end. It's weird, man. The way they have it set up is weird. So ideally the people that we have our money with that we're trusting to keep our money safe, or at least do the thing that we think they're doing with it. They have an obligation to be forthcoming with us and tell us what's happening. When they're not doing that, it sketches me out a little bit. If I missed anything, or if you have further questions, then feel free to ask them. And otherwise, you can watch some other M1 Finance videos right here. All right, I'll see you guys. Oh, not tomorrow. Today's Friday. I'll see you guys Monday. All right, bye.